All right, so now that I've shown you how to draw curves and how to deal with corners by holding your option key, we're going to combine those by drawing curves, corners, and reconnecting to the beginning to create fully enclosed shapes. So here in Illustrator again, file and new. This remembers the last thing that I created. So it's tabloid, 11 by 17, it's inches, it's vertical. So I just click create. Now I repeat that process all over again. File and place so I can trace. Takes me right back out to that folder in chapter three. Here's my scan. I make sure my options have no check marks down here. I click place. I'm gonna click anywhere on the page. With my black arrow, I just move that onto the artboard, right there, or the page, whatever you wanna call it. I want to do a tracing process. So again, to the right of layer one, this blank space right here, you double click. I can set this up as a template. I want to dim mine down. And again, so you could see this on the screen on my tutorial, I'll dim it down to 20% and click OK. This layer is locked. Do not unlock it. Do not touch this layer again. It's locked because the layer is done. You're going to create a brand new blank layer. If you want to name it, you just double click the name and I'll call this shapes and hit return or enter on a PC to accept the name. And once again, if I'm on a brand new layer, I want to reset my default color. So that is D for default. Even though these shapes look like they're filled with white, we're not going to fill them with white. We're eventually going to fill this one with color, this one with a gradient, and this one with a pattern to show you the three things that your swatches panel holds. It holds colors, gradients, and patterns. But you don't use those until you're done drawing your shapes. I always recommend draw them as black outlines, then you fill them. So I'm gonna click on the white fill, hit the question mark key for no fill. You always fill things at the end, not from the start. Remember, D for default colors is a one point stroke. So I'm gonna set the weight back up to five points, a bolder line for today, so you can see more clearly what you're drawing. Okay, and I'm gonna zoom in, and it says, after you have gone all the way around, remember to hold the option key to close this shape correctly. So as I do this demo, I'm gonna do it um, incorrectly to kind of show you how people screw these up at the end and then I'll show you how to fix it but before I draw okay this says this is the loop you're gonna see a circle next to your pen tool it shows up when you've gone all the way around a shape and back to the beginning like a loop this loop means that you are about to close up the border like there's no gaps in the border here okay so right here, it says start here and end here. So I'm gonna take my pen tool. I'm gonna to start here, click and drag up to the right because my curve goes to the right. Now the end of the curve is coming down and to the right. So I'll click and drag down. Again, I'm not looking down here. I'm looking up here at the way my dragging the mouse is bending that edge. Now the next curve starts from a corner. Option key and the curve goes up to the left. No option key at the end and it goes up to the right. Okay, option key to start from a corner, it goes to the left. No option key at the end and it rises up to the left. Option key to start from a corner comes down to the left no option key at the end and it rises back up to the left and I just hold my space bar to push it back into view here option key to start from a corner it comes almost straight down no option key at the end you can see it's going down and to the left so I'll press and hold and go down and to the left and here's where people mess up 
option key to start from a corner. It goes in to the right. But when you come back to end at a corner, first you can see that tiny little circle next to my pen tool. I've got the loop. But when I am ending on a corner, you're going to also hold your option key when you end at a corner. If you don't, and I'll do it right here, you will flip and ruin the first curve. So I'll go to edit, undo that, and I'll back up and start again. Option key to start from a corner, it goes to the right. But when I am ending on a corner, I'm going to hold my option key and drag down. That allows me to finish off this curve without destroying the first one because I'm ending at a corner. Command click to deselect. And again, I'm not going to save it on this tutorial, but I would save your progress after you finish a shape. Then you can call this last name, first name, shapes. I'm going to hold my space bar for the hand tool, push this up. And this shape is a little too big, so command and minus. I can just do it once, just so I can see the entire shape on my screen right there. Now in this one it says, on a curved shape like this, you do not have to hold the option key to close because there are no corners. Okay, Just because you come around back to the start doesn't mean you hold the option key every time. It's only when you are ending on a corner and there are no corners here. Okay, Start here and end here without holding the option key because that is not a corner. So right here, the curve goes up to the right. Then I come across to the next point. It comes down to the right. Come over to the next point. Now it's rising back up to the right. So I click and drag up, but I'm looking down here. Once I let go, I'll come around to the next point. Now it's coming down and to the left. Even though I'm dragging down here, I'm looking up here. Every time I let go, I'll move. Now it's coming back up to the left. So even though I'm going to drag up to here, I'm looking over here. There we go. Once I let go, I come back around. Now it comes down. And let's say you're in the middle of a drawing like this and you get a phone call or you just have to go to the restroom or just take a break or whatever. You take your arrow and you click outside. You've got an unfinished piece of artwork. Okay. If you ever do that, which is fine, but if you ever do that and now you come back 10, 15 minutes later and you're ready to finish, what you have to do is take your arrow, select the line that you drew, just click and drag anywhere on it so you see the anchor points. And then you go back to your pen tool and you have to start where you left off. Okay, you can't just start here and clicking. So I ended right here, so I'm going to start right here. I have to reconnect to the end of the line. So I'm going to click and drag to go down to the left, come all the way around. Right there, I see that little loop next to my pen tool. Press and hold and drag up and up and up. And if I hit the edge of my screen, notice how it pushes it out of the way. Okay, so that's going to mess it up. So I have to go to edit, undo, hold my space bar. And knowing that I have to come back and drag up, I'm going to push this down on my screen just to make sure I don't hit the edge. Okay, so I'll just do it again. Click and drag where I left off. Come back around. There's my loop, but that is not a corner, so I'm not going to hold my option key. Press and hold and drag and drag and drag up until I have finished the shape completely. If there's any bumps or things that you don't like, you can always take your white arrow, click on a point, Wiggle that around a little bit and reshape a curve if you think it needs it. But you can always fix things with your white arrow. Click outside to deselect. Hold my space bar for the hand and I'll push this up. 
And it says here, on a straight edge object, you do not have to hold the option key when you are finishing on a corner because you only hold the option key when you are finishing on a corner connected to a curve. Okay, if anything is just straight edges, you don't have to hold the option key when you end because you're just clicking, you're not clicking and dragging. I know there's a lot of rules with the pen tool, but I'm going to lay them all out now so eventually you're going to get used to them. Okay, so in this one, we just have to click at every point, like connect the dots. So I'm going to take my pen tool, click to start, click, 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 click. Click. and let's say I make a mistake like this you can either wait to correct that later or you just hold your command key and just move the anchor point when you let go of your command key remember you got to reconnect so I'm just gonna click to reconnect click and then continue drawing and come back to the start right there now here's one thing I gotta show you I'm going to click outside with my white arrow. Okay, notice how I get a sharp corner here and here and here and here and here, but that one is not sharp. Okay, the reason why that happens, it looks like it's random, but there is a reason why it's happening, and I want to show you that before I show you how to fix it. So I'm going to take my pen tool, and right over here on my stroke panel, I'm going to set the pop-up bar down to 20, a really fat line, okay? When your corners are wide, you're going to get sharp corners like this. Click, click, click. I get a sharp corner. Command click to deselect. And when I make the corners even sharper or less pointed like, like this, click, 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 I still get a nice sharp corner. Command click to deselect. But when you have a very shallow angle, Illustrator will chop that off. And I'll just draw it right here. Click, click, click. Ooh, notice how it made a really, really sharp corner. But watch what happens with my white arrow. If the angle or distance is wide, you're going to get a sharp corner. If it's too shallow or too close, see, it just chopped it off. If I widen that out a little bit, it fixes it. Okay, the wider the distance, the more you will get a sharp corner. If they're too close together, that corner would look way up here. It would look like a needle that would kill someone. So Illustrator knows that's not going to look good, so it just chops it off. That is something called a miter limit. Okay, just so you know what it's doing. So I'm going to take my white arrow, select that, delete, 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 delete. And if this corner didn't turn out sharp, that's because these are not far enough apart. So I could just take a little corner right here. Just push it up a little wider and you can see it fixed it right there. Keep in mind, that doesn't perfectly match my scan, and that's no big deal. What you always have to keep in mind about Illustrator is your scan is a general idea on where to draw on the page. Because always keep in mind, at the end, you're not going to show me your scan. You're going to throw it in the trash. So who's going to know you are off? Okay, keep that in mind. But now that I've widened out that angle, I've got sharp corners everywhere. Command zero means fit on screen. And what I'm gonna do is I don't need my stroke panel. I'm just gonna click right up here, this little double arrowhead, expand the panels again. I can take the word stroke, drag it and drop it right there. I see a blue outline. So I'm going to put it right next to gradient and transparency there. If this takes up too much space, I can double click on the word, double click it again, that'll collapse it, or I double click to expand it, double click. 
if it's still cutting off the swatches, I can just tear the swatches panel out, pull the bottom edge down. And the whole idea for this, to show you the swatches, your swatches panel stores three things, okay? Like I've drawn three shapes. So I'm gonna take my black arrow. Remember the difference between the black and the white arrow is with the black arrow or the solid arrow, if I clicked on this corner and then I drag, the whole thing is going to move because the solid arrow activates solid anchor points and solid anchor points are movable. If I click with the white arrow or the hollow arrow, clicking on one point only activates that one point. The other ones are still hollow. So now when I drag, notice I can pull that apart. So your white arrow is your editing or your fix it tool. Okay. Your black arrow is your selection or your move tool. So if I wanted to select and move these and experiment, like these two are a little too close together, I'm going to take my black arrow, click on the edge and drag. And when an object has no color, you cannot click inside the object. There's nothing there. You got to click on the edge to activate it. Okay, so if you don't want to slow down and just be real precise and click, just click and drag and hit the object. So in Illustrator, if I'm on the fill and I've selected an object, I can fill it with color. Illustrator has all these colors, oranges, greens, blues, browns, all those colors. If you don't like any of these colors, you can go to your color panel and mix your own. Like I can take some of the yellow out of that, add a little more blue to make it purple. You know, like any painting would do, you mix up your own palette of colors. But I have all my colors right here. If I wanted to change the outline or the stroke, you click on the stroke so it comes to the top. Then you pick a color. And if that color is kind of hard to see, that's because the outline is so thin. So right here on my stroke panel, you can either come over to your stroke panel or you come up here to the shortcut to the stroke panel. And I can hit the up arrow, make that outline really thick so we can actually see it. If I wanted this piece to fill with green, I click on the fill, then I click green. If I want the stroke to be black, click on the stroke, now click on black. But if you can click outside, if you don't see anchor points, this object is not active. So clicking on the stroke and changing it to red won't do anything. Okay, you can only change these things when you have clicked on an object. So now that this object is filled with color, I can click on the color to activate it. I'll click on red for the stroke, click on the fill and make that orange. And these correspond, click an object, fill it, click on the fill, put an outline, click on the stroke. Okay, so you got to understand that correlation. I'm going to click on this guy and notice the stroke is on top. Okay, I want to fill this, so I got to click on the fill. Your swatches panel also stores gradients. Gradients are blends of color. So notice it starts with black and white or yellow to orange or blue to nothing, fading sky, whatever. Okay, if I don't like the direction that this gradient goes, this is my gradient tool right here. As soon as I click that, I get what's called a gradient widget or a gradient annotator. It's a bar that shows me where my colors are and how they spread across the shape. So if I want a gradient that goes up and down, I click and drag a new bar that goes up and down or top to bottom, up and down, down and up, whatever you want, but you click and drag your gradients. 
If you don't like these gradients, because Illustrator only starts you with three, your swatches panel has a library in the bottom left corner. So let me just move this up a little bit so you can see this. Here's my library. I can come down to gradients, and these are all sorts of gradients that the folks at Adobe have mixed for you. So if I'm doing an outdoor scene and I have a sky, I could click on a blue sky gradient or click on a sunset gradient. I can click and drag the direction of my gradients like that. And notice it gives me a separate panel. So I can close that and they're still saved on my swatches. Black arrow is your select. I'll click outside. And the final one is this shape down here. So I'll just click and drag and select it. I'm on the fill. And the third thing your swatches panel stores is patterns. So I have two of them right here. One is called foliage and the other one is called pompadour. Okay, but when you have a really skinny shape, it's kind of hard to see the pattern. So same thing, Illustrator only starts me with two. But in the bottom left corner of my swatches panel, again, are libraries. And I can come down to patterns. I have basic graphics, which are all black and white. You have black and white dots, black and white lines, black and white textures. You have decorative patterns. Legacy means older patterns that came with Illustrator. So they look like grandma's wallpaper. Um, Vonster patterns are these two foliage and pompadour and you have nature animal skins or foliage so if I went to nature and animal skins I could click a zebra stripe pattern or a tiger stripe pattern or a cheetah pattern okay and every time I click one of these patterns they get added to my swatches so I can get rid of this by clicking the X but they're still available here Okay, and later on in the uh, course, I will show you how to mix your own colors, how to mix your own gradients, and most importantly, how to make your own patterns. Okay, so you're going to turn in this file. You can save it one last time, last name, first name, shapes, or whatever you want. And that will show you the basics on how to use Adobe Illustrator and the pen tool. You should become pretty adept at the pen tool by now. I'll see you next time in whatever next thing I'm going to teach you. I'll see you later.